So here I have my Fostec Echo and my Strike Industries jig. Now I have milled the side of this jig out for the purpose of making the video here so we can see the inner workings a little better and I've also installed my selector backwards so that when I have it on echo mode it won't be blocking the inner movements. So we'll start by depressing the trigger. As we can see, nothing happens. The uh, trigger block is in play down there, right there. And that does not disengage until it gets pushed forward by the carrier. So once it's forward with the carrier, it comes in, the hammer falls. So if the trigger is released during the cycle, the hammer will come back. And resume going back to the first uh, primary front sear of the trigger itself. If the hammer is held back while it cycles, it will be pushed onto the backup disconnector. So when we release, it's held on that backup disconnector. And if you noticed here, it did not automatically release the hammer. That's because it wasn't pulled far enough back. To activate the echo, you have to pull all the way back until it cams. You heard it click right there. That's when it drops off the backup disconnector and then falls on that sear, the uh, primary disconnector. And then you release the trigger, it drops the hammer again. Now if we look down inside, we can see that backup disconnector as it gets moved back and forward by the trigger block. So while we have it zoomed in here, we'll watch the hammer come back and catch on the disconnector. So now it's hooked in on the backup disconnector. Releasing it, drops it back to the front sear. And that's without the trigger being pulled. So the full order of operations, trigger drops, hammer comes back, clicks onto the backup disconnector, trigger gets pulled hard till it clicks off, trigger is released, hammer drops again. So now I've moved it over into the semi-automatic position. And here, we use the other disconnector on the inside. The hammer is cocked, the bolt carrier still has to disengage the trigger block. So once that's moved out of the way, we pull the trigger, the hammer drops, it gets cocked back down onto the disconnector that sits on the left side. We release the trigger, it falls on the front sear face of the hammer. Pull the trigger, it drops. Now if you'll notice, during that cycle of operations, we're not releasing it far enough forward to fall back into the trigger block. To do that, we have to go a little farther forward. And there, it clicks back in. So, in that case, we can't pull it anymore. Have to wait for the bolt carrier group to close. It cams out of the way. Now we can pull the trigger again.